John Caglione Jr. is one of the top makeup artists in the business, with a remarkable string of credits that include his Academy Award-winning work on Dick Tracy, as well as Chaplin, The Departed, and The Dark Knight, for which he just received another Oscar nomination. He's also been Al Pacino's personal makeup artist on nine films. Do you, do you see a connection here? Including Insomnia, Heat, and Angels in America. In this really wonderful conversation, Mr. Caglione discusses his ongoing relationship with Mr. Pacino and his magical experiences with Heath Ledger while he was crafting the look of the Joker. I hope everyone enjoys this interview. This is John Caglione, Jr. I understand that you fell in love with the universal horror films like the Frankenstein uh, films when you were younger, and that's what kind of drew you to your field. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. It was those old universal horror films, you know, the original Frankenstein with Boris Karloff, and uh, there was a magazine, um, you know, like a child of the 60s, and it was the only magazine that was out at that time was this magazine called Famous Monsters of Filmland, mm. and it was kind of the, uh, you know, where I would get to read about Jack Pierce, the, uh, you know, the uh, great makeup artist that did all those memorable universal monsters. So that's I used I, to read that every week as a kid, that magazine. Do you? Oh, I used to read that and it would go to this newsstand near our house, and I'd always get like the newest issue. How, how old are you? How, how old? Are I'm you? I'm 38. I'm an old man, right. but I yeah. used to go in the 70s <laughs> and get that. You're an old man. I'm an old. No, everyone says I'm old, but I love. I miss that magazine. I used yeah. to. That was the only source. I mean, that and Starlog and Fantastic Films are like the only That's source. That's right, man. Wow, you're bringing me back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. So, but where, where did you go? Uh, how could you? Uh, what path did you take to kind of pursue this as a career? Well, I actually, uh, I had seen the movie The Exorcist, and uh, Dick Smith, who I consider the greatest makeup artist of all time, did that. And, Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's amazing. And I wrote a letter, a fan letter. There was a, a magazine called Rona Barrett's Gossip, an old magazine in the 70s. And in the back of that magazine, there was an address for the Linda Blair fan club. So I didn't know where Dick Smith lived. It was, I think it was the Warner Brothers Studios. So I wrote one letter. And I think I drew Dick's face on the envelope and Dick Smith makeup artist, the big black letters, the exorcist. And it, it, I tell you, it was like throwing a note, uh, putting a note in a bottle and throwing it out in the ocean. Because that one letter got to the fan club and then got forwarded to Dick Smith's house. Oh. And I'll never forget, I was, I was playing touch football in the street with my friends and my mother yells, Johnny, Dick Smith's on the phone. And uh, I get on the phone, and I'm, you know, <laughs> is this Dick Smith? <laughs> and, it's, and that started a correspondence. That, that actually started, I, was, I think I was about 14. And that actually wow. started a correspondence. And, uh, and he took me under his wing as a protege. And uh, then when I was 18, he recommended me to NBC TV in New York. And I was graduating high school in, in 1976, and I went down and got the job and started in television. And that was with the original cast of Saturday Night Live. So I started with, um, you know, putting the cone heads on and putting the soul patches on the Blues Brothers. So that was a great... Yeah. Oh, from the Golden Age. Yeah. Yeah, I'm dating myself, but yeah. That's all right. You're dating yourself the good stuff, though. So, I mean... (laughs) (laughs) I really really owe a lot to Dick Smith because he really got me started. Yeah, it, and that's incredible for, for for an idol of yours to be so instrumental in you. But what about his work and the work of others that you saw? What about it spoke to you, and why did you know this was for you? Well, you know, when I uh, met Dick, I went to his shop. He had a basement workshop at his house, and I went in there, and this was right after The Exorcist came out, and I was raving to him about the Linda Blair makeup, and he took me down in the shop, and he was showing me. He says, well, what did you think of the old Father Marin? The old priest, and I was like, oh, you know, he's a, he's a good old guy, and he said, let me show you how I did that. I'm like, how he did that? What's that? <laughs> and he took out Max von Sydow's life cast and started pulling, putting these foam rubber jowls and neck appliances, prosthetics on him, and, and I didn't realize that the whole makeup, his whole face is rubber. Yeah. So that was really an inspirational moment for me. That was when I decided, you know, this is really uh, it's something that I really have to check out. I'm not totally fooled, like most people. 
You know, you, you, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, did you know that that was a whole big makeup job? The guy's whole face was rubber. I, I don't. Know. I I didn't know, but but yeah. that I did not that know brings that. Up, no. that brings up a good point in in that a lot of this work. I mean, there there's the obvious makeup work uh, that obviously looks astounding, but with a lot of this work, it's about being seamless and invisible. That's, that's what I call them, the invisibles. Yeah, that's one yeah. of them. Yeah. For instance, I know you you love uh, to make. This sounds like a funny statement, but you love to make noses, like Nicole Kidman's nose in the hours. And, and yeah, the, I didn't and, do that actually. That was Connor, the guy okay. that worked with me on 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 uh, Heath's makeup. So mm-hmm. Connor did that, but I made the nose on Gold in My Air uh, mm-hmm. on Broadway. Her her Gold in My Air nose, and I also did you know Pacino's nose in Dick Tracy. That oh. was one of the pieces he wore. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, this this was going to be brought up sooner or later anyway, so <clears throat> I, I, I must tell you, anyone that listens to this show knows that I, I kind of idolize Al Pacino. And I, any, person, oddly. <laughs> any person I uh, can, can get in touch with and speak to about Pacino, I, I relish the opportunity. You started with him on Dick Tracy, didn't you? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you kind of have, have hung with him for many movies Sense. I have, yeah, very, very. Tell me about that that relationship and some of the high points of, of it career wise for you. Oh man, well that you know that was a big break to get getting that film. Um, yeah, you know, it was really a, that was a career maker really for me, and it really began my working relationship with Pacino. So mm-hmm. uh, you know that was really a, an incredible experience. It was really good working with Al because uh, he would come to the shop where I was designing the prosthetics and he would actually do big boy with me and he would actually do the voice and and i would sculpt on his life cast while he was over my shoulder he could make the nose a little bigger and and uh maybe we can try a chin and do things and we it was real it was a real collaborative uh, i mean i was i was nervous wreck being around the guy because i like you I'm, I'm a huge al pacino fan yeah and uh i i it, i think it's it took me like four or five movies to kind of calm down with uh, being with Pacino. Look what you did to your pretty tuxedo. Big boy, ain't we pals? No pals in this business, Lutz. You taught me that. Sign it. The deed to the club roots? That's right. I'm going into show business now. Get dirty, Lutz. You need a bat. Not the bat. Not the bat, big boy. Not the bat. <laughs> I would never have calmed down. I would have been nervous, yeah. <laughs> frightened for the whole time. I mean, Michael Corleone. I mean, no. I mean, oh I was yeah, just a nervous like, wreck. Yeah, I mean, man, yeah. My, my hat's off to you. Yeah, no. But, but you've been on you've been on some incredible uh, film sets uh, yeah. of his and, and others. Obviously, like Heat. And, oh man, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so what? To, what are some of the most memorable kinds of experiences you've had with? With directors on, on on some of these and locations and oh well you mean on Heat a little uh, on that film yeah. well uh, I, I, sure on Heat of course sure. well you know I had just moved back to New York uh, I kind of gave up I used to have a shop in Hollywood and I'm married about 28 years I have a couple kids and and we we we're from we're New Yorkers and we moved to L A to do Dick Tracy and I wound up getting into the union there and and staying there for about six years and. We kind of got homesick, and I moved back to New York, and I actually came back to really no work. It was really, really like starting my career over again. Mm. And I got lucky. I got I landed the job on Saturday Night Live again in '92 with the, the the cast with Chris Farley and Adam Sandler and those guys. And I did that show mm. for about a year and a half. And and um, but it was like I, I was starting from ground zero again. I was actually like. We were almost broke starting over, and mm. it was kind of cathartic in a way, you know, just to kind of, you know, shake off Hollywood and get back to reality and get back to New York to our families. And and um, but I was really struggling, and uh, and out of nowhere I get a phone call. I had done a film years ago with Michael Mann called Manhunter, yeah. and also worked did the inside. I love that film. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, out of nowhere I get a call from Michael Mann's office saying, Hey, would you like to do this movie Heat? Yeah, you know, it was it, there. You, it was it saved me. You know, it was like yeah. really like yeah, 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 I'll do heat and and uh, and it was a, a chance to team up with uh, you know with Al again and and uh, that film that film really really saved me and put me back on track. 
Mm. So, uh, you know, big I, shout out to Michael Mann, who is a great guy to work for, and uh, makes you really work and brings out the best in everyone. Makes you really oh, do your homework, and you really have to do your background and 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 all your research, and and just makes you makes you a lot better. So it's yeah. one of our great storytellers. Oh, he really isn't is. he? It's amazing. I mean, he's a, an epic. I think he Chris Nolan said he really kind of patterned the Dark Knight, some of it after Heat. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that was one of his inspirational films, Chris, Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, it, oh, yeah. Before we talk about the Dark Knight, because I, I'm definitely excited about talking about that with you, uh, there's an early credit on your resume that I wanted to touch upon real quick. And we're doing a two hour kind of retrospective on the Friday the 13th series. Right, uh, all right. In two weeks. I see that one of the first gigs you got was on, on Friday the 13th, part two. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I was real lucky. I got to, Carl Fullerton was in charge of the department, and I was his lab guy, basically. I was in there making molds and whipping up phone latex for Carl, and, uh, and you know, there's another great makeup artist, Carl Fullerton. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, 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 he's amazing. He did... Uh, did you ever see Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins? Of course. The, uh, old shoe um, I on. saw it on videotape. I didn't, I didn't get to see it in the theater, but I saw it on videotape a lot of times. I love the music from that movie. Just yeah, I mean... I, I love the music. Yeah, and that makeup is still one of the, the I think, the, one of the best makeups of all time. There's another Invisible for you there, you know. That's, yeah, yeah. You know, a beautiful makeup job. But, you know, I was just, I was Carl's lab guy and, you know, very happy to do slit throats and, and mix blood for him. And, and I learned a lot. I think a lot of the lab practices that I use today... I, I really learned from Carl Fullerton. He's, yeah. he's really an ace yeah. makeup guy. Going from there to Dark Knight, um, can you assess your your growth as an artist? How do you think that you've you've grown? Oh man, God, I don't, I don't know. You know, I just uh, I just uh, the, the, that's the great thing about the business is that you just never know what's around the corner next. Yeah, it's kind of the the fun part as far as growth. Mm-hmm. Um, Gee, you know, I just, uh, that's a tough one. I just, it's uh, a pretty loaded uh, question we're talking about. It is a loaded question. Yeah, many, I don't many think years. we really ever stop. I mean, you know, it's uh, on the dark night to paint that makeup. I, You know, was, I've never really ever painted anything like that before. Yeah. And uh, probably never will again. And uh, I have a, a question just about Aaron Eckhart. What was it like, I mean, for you to, to do work with Aaron Eckhart, but also what was it like for Aaron Eckhart? Because this was by far the biggest thing that he'd ever been involved with coming from, like, Neil Abuse movies and, and definitely a darling of the independent scene, but just this, the makeup involved, what was he? What was his reaction to it? You mean to Heath's makeup? No, or to, uh, to you're talking Aaron about Harvey Toothpaste. Harvey Dent, yeah. Toothpaste. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, well, first of all, uh, Heath was my main guy, so I really didn't deal with, uh, except to say hi to him in the morning and kind of hang out with him in the trailer, I really had yeah. no connection to uh, Aaron at all. I mean, he's a great okay. guy, and cool chatting with him but uh you know i have to tell you that harvey two-face was mainly a digital effect that was not a makeup effect oh but, oh yeah that's really mostly i think connor o'sullivan the, the prosthetic supervisor on the film okay. he did a bald head kind of like a burned kind of bald head and but the face and the eyeball and all that stuff is digital okay yeah. i realize that obviously some of that was digital but then i just you mean that was wow okay that's all digital yeah, yeah. You, it's wow. pretty amazing, you know. It's like that. It is and, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Just has. <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I'm still sick. I've been getting over sickness. Does that still? Uh, does that affect your work at all? This the new digital technology more and more. Well, I think it does step on our toes a little bit, honestly. Um, but I mean, you can't deny it. it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, I. I uh, you, you shave a lot of time off the day as far as shooting. You can actually go in there and uh, stick a few dots on Aaron's face and and go shoot the scene and and what would normally take four or five hours of makeup and removal time, you can get it done in a straight day shooting it. Mm. So I mean, it's a time saver and and it, it's it's pretty amazing. So I, I can't really I tip my hat to it really. I, mm-hmm. I, I did this film a couple of years ago called The Departed and in the yeah. at, at the end you know there was a whole big scene where everyone gets you know, like half the cast gets killed. In the yeah. elevator, and you know, we're That's talking. Putting them off, yeah. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> to Marty, Martin Scorsese about how we're going to do all this, and and uh, in the end, it was all digital. You know, it, if I had put on appliances and squibs and 
bloodlines. We, 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 what we shot in four, eight hours would mm-hmm. have taken two days to shoot with prosthetics. Wow. So mm-hmm. I, think, I think in some cases it's the, it's the way to go. And, and in the, on The Departed, it was a, a safer way to go. You know, nobody yeah. got hurt, and you could just uh, mm. you can kind of okay. design it. And now, let me ask you about the the Joker and 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 the and the planning of how you were going to craft this this character in terms of makeup. What were those conversations? And was was Mr. Ledger involved? I'm sure he was about crafting that look as well. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, you can't really do it without Heath. It's it's you know, it's it's designed for him. And what happened was, I I went to London to do the makeup test. And he's now just playing around with paints in the makeup trailer, getting ready for the test in London. And, and Chris Nolan came into the trailer and showed Heath and I this book on Francis Bacon paintings. Mm. Really cool mm. but kind of disturbing images and these yeah. kind of six-color paintings, very dreary and kind of creepy. And uh, Chris wanted the look to be very – to look caked and smudged, and then he wanted me to degrade it in stages through the film. So that was mm-hmm. – where Chris was coming from, and that book became my inspiration for the Joker makeup. And we would take that information, and Heath and I would, were playing with the paints, and we worked out a series of facial expressions that Heath would hit, these extreme facial expressions. He would crinkle up his nose and wrinkle up his eyes, and while I painted the colors over his these extreme expressions, mm. and it created this kind of cracky, textured look. You know, I would plop on colors and stipple on, blob on certain paints in certain areas of his face while he held these expressions. And it kind of, it's a tailor-made makeup. I mean, it's its really built just for his face and his expressions. So it really it, is astounding, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, real it, collaboration between the three of us. It was just, it, you know, it doesn't happen yeah. very often in someone's career where it just everything kind of just clicks and, and it happened there. And what I love about it, and uh, I'm sure Jerry feels the same way, is the makeup, it speaks to the anarchy of that character. It does. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Was, that, was that kind of the modus operandi there to, in terms of building the character? Yeah, I think it's the, that whole thing. It's the, you know, the, uh, the outer skin kind of re- revealing the inner soul of mm-hmm. the character, and then as he just starts to slowly decay and break down, the outer shell starts to go to. But I guess that's all tied into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your your experience with with Heath Ledger and Chris Nolan both on this project. Oh, uh, you know, I, I it's, it was incredible, incredible. A lot of great feelings there, and uh, I did a film with Al. Actually, I mean, I, I think I have to really give Al a lot of credit for me getting the Dark Knight because he requested me for a film, this film Insomnia that Chris Nolan Insomnia. directed. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Yeah, actually, and I yeah. think that's how I got The Dark Knight. Chris remembered me with Al and thought that it worked out good there and thought oh. I'd be good for Heath. So there's Al Pacino right there. And uh, But uh, it was great with Chris. He There's a lot of trust, and, and he really kind of let me off the hook, gave me some key notes that I had to follow. And then with Heath, it, he was... Uh, it just absolutely incredible, loving person to be around every day. I'm not kidding you. It's just yeah. I've never had an experience like that with an actor, and I've worked with great actors, but there's a lot of love and caring going on in the trip. Like when Heath would come in in the morning, sometimes really early in the morning, like 5:30 in the morning, uh, the first thing he would do was would be to hug everybody in the trailer. I mean, mm-hmm. big bear hugs to everybody. You know, all the makeup and hair people and all the actors sitting in the chair, and and then uh, we would do the makeup take about an hour and a half and and work a full day, work a 12-hour day. I think he worked 60 days in the film. And no matter how banged up or bruised he was after a long day, we would take off the last drip of, drop of makeup and he would just hug everybody in the trailer on, before he left. Mm. And I've never seen uh, anything like it. Uh, just, a, just, he's, just a great energy to be around and, and uh, you know. Yeah, we were, yeah. We're, we're a lot better off for that experience, I'll tell you. It's just a, just a great feeling it, he set. A great, it, and it's a, it's a performance for the time vault. I mean, it, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's going to live forever. Yeah, well, it, it, can you sense when you start applying this makeup, for instance, on Heath or, or any of these other just astounding talents that you've worked on? Can you sense within them a, a transformation taking place? 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's a, that's, that's kind of the... I guess a lot of makeup people say it, but it's really true with these girls. Like Al Pacino, we would do... I'd do the big boy makeup on him, and, and I he'd come in as Al, you know, really quiet, and he'd sit in the chair, and I'd start to put the nose on him and the lip, and he would close his eyes, and every time he would look in the mirror, he was more and more the character. Yeah. And you you got to witness the metamorphosis, like you're just saying. You get to see it happen right in front of you. And then you see these great actors take what you did and then take it to a whole new level. And, mm. and uh, you know, it's 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 a real it's a real thrill to, to be a part of that. And uh, I, I never cease being amazed by that, that, that transformation that takes place. Yeah, and it's really and, cool. And, it really is, cool. and it's it's also in in terms of the Joker. I mean, he actually used makeup for obviously for some of the character ticks and the the the, the scars on the his cheeks that he right. kind of you could see him kind of sucking on them. Or <laughs> yeah, like licking, licking his the, the the scar on his lip and you know, yeah. yeah yeah and in dialogue. Every time he talked about the scars, it was a different story and. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things that it's that image and that character. It just mm-hmm. comes together beautifully. It, it, it doesn't happen very often. How about a magic trick? I'm going to make this pencil disappear. Ta-da! It's, it's gone. Oh, and by the way, the suit, it wasn't cheap. You ought to know you bought it. Yeah. Before I let you go, I got to ask about the Oscars. Uh, congrats on your on your nomination. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Very well deserved. Thank you. Now you've won before for Dick Tracy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was that experience like for you? Oh man, God, you know. Geez. Well, first of all, I didn't think I was going to get Dick Tracy. I was like a long. I'm from New York, and that was a Hollywood-based film, so it was like right. a. You know, didn't think I would get it, but yeah, it's it's totally surreal and unbelievable to first of all get the job, and uh, and and then to do it, and then you know the, what happened afterward with the Oscar. It's just uh, it's beyond the dream. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's beyond the dream. And, and uh, are you are you are the nerves going yet for for this time around? Oh, we're psyched. You know, my wife's looking at dresses <laughs> online already, and <laughs> we're, we're completely psyched. Can't believe well, it. That's, you know? that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rightfully <laughs> so. You come back uh, when you pick up that Oscar, and and tell us all about your experience there. I'd love to, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks much. Joe. Very very much. This is. This Thank is you. Very painless. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't do these. I don't do these. Good to know. That's good to know. That's good to know it was painless. 